very first invite the panel moderator for today, that is Sanisha Gamboli, who is the Global Health Procurement IT Delivery. Welcome, ma'am, for the panel discussion. Can I invite Suresh Babu, Garden who is the head of corporate procurement and operations with Alana Group? Please welcome him with a big round of applause. <laughs> Dilip Matri, part of business director, ISM India with SAP Alba. Ganesh Vasar, procurement business partner, lead with Nestle. Sachin Tiwari, associate partner, procurement transformation, IDF consulting, IDF Media and South Asia. from Alana Sons. The procurement function is very, very important function in the organization. The, we are uh, spenders. So if the sales, definitely it's, uh, they are getting the money for the organization, but uh, procurement is very important. In the procurement, it's a very vast subject, so I don't want to take much time on this. The, we'll talk about only the key CD, so the quality is very important, and cost and uh, delivery. These three things are very, very important. Uh, forget rest all things. Is, it's a land with the things. If you talk about the quality, that's whatever material you are buying is as for the requirement. The cost is it should be optimum and delivery. Delivery is as for the cost lead time. So for that, how do what are the action plans is very, very important uh, in terms of the people, process and technology. I'll call it as a chart called PPT. So process, people, sorry, people, process and uh, technology. If you have a right technology, you don't have a right manpower, so we can't run the show. It's very, very important. And the process also, it's very, very important. So there are some companies using the old processes. Please review process regularly. It helps you to much better. You can manage much better, actually. So in short, I want to tell you for the procurement, it's very, very important. Why it is very, very important? With the current scenario, is a challenging. Meeting the customer expectation is very difficult nowadays so with timelines. Uh, another thing which I have drive in my organizations, uh, it actually start from the top-down approach, not bottom-up approach. So if you have a top-down approach, definitely we can success very well because a lot of IT experts, then procurement experts, finance experts are there in the ring. Even I drive in my area and we succeed very well. Uh, that, uh, that team started with a force team, force, F-O-R-C, force team. Focus on reducing the cost everywhere. So that team which I have developed and uh, 
consider the last in five years we are trying with this thing and it's working very well and one more thing i want to be highlight uh, related to uh, that the three t's that is the uh, transparency is very very important uh, second is the uh, traceability is whatever things you are doing the traceability is very very important third is time saving so time saving if you use this technology definitely will be able to save the time so overall you consider if overall you consider that you record uh, trust also trust, trust is also very very important apart from this uh, the whatever the saving saving is for me is a by product i don't focus on the saving part i focus on the process system traceability and everything let's it's my overall thing thank, thank you so thank you very much so this is over to you i would ask the same question how do you see kutchum becoming a critical function Last couple of years, the game has totally changed. Since we have talked about pharma industry, there has been disruption in uh, demand, and uh, there has been it has been very difficult to forecast the phase. In this scenario, there, there is a great uh, role of uh, you know, procurement firms. They have been sure that uh, the products are in demand. They have to meet those products have to be made available. Again, there are shortages. Uh, there are products which is not getting sold. So we have to maintain that. So that is one perspective wherein uh, demand for, uh, you know, um, sales for tasks has become uh, very difficult. So managing the stock, procuring those stocks at the time of pandemic and uh, again, uh, you know, bringing new products on, on board is another challenge. And uh, one of the most critical, I uh, think, uh, which uh, as a finance or supply chain head, which I observe that they are very great in, uh, you know, driving the profitability of, uh, of an organization. It is almost, uh, which I observe, 70% costs are being controlled by uh, procurement. So the role of uh, procurement has uh, you know, become to a level where wherein they can drive this uh, fleet as well as you know, profit. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my next question goes to Sachin. Sachin, wanted to know what are the risks associated with the science procurement? In the past, we looked at procurement from a scientific perspective. So, what are the risks, and how are organizations today trying to mitigate such risks? Yeah. So. Uh if you talk about silo procurement, uh, I just want to give definition to that because people assume buying decentralized silo or uh, buying different. But silo can be uh, people buying in different business units buying differently, different team buying differently, not talking to each other as well as one more area which is procurement not talking to its stakeholders or maybe different uh, uh, you can say uh, associated or infected parties so that is a silo for me and what i have seen silo procurement not only has lead to cost leakages uh, it has also led to value destruction uh, value destruction in uh, many senses not only not capturing the right value on the right time but also you are not able to capture the supply market dynamics which in turn lead to your either revenue loss or profitability, profitability decay. So those are the things which typically a siloed organization lead to. It also limit the ability of any organization to leverage synergies and also bring, uh, you can say, a long range plan for the organization to benefit from the procurement world. If I talk about the initiatives, uh, what we have helped or other companies are taking for removing that silo in the organization, First, I'll put it into three bullets. First, uh, there are overarching or maybe integrated technology platforms and uh, technologies which can help them come on a single place and can drive that value out of that platform. Second, rethinking about the operating model. That's one of the very critical things. People have uh, all the legacy issues or the way they are working typically remains and they don't look at how they can build that or, or revisit their operating model. It can be a center of excellence. It can be a shared service center. It can be a centralized organization or it can be a decentralized organization. But revisiting operating model with the change in time has to be done. It can give you not only the synergy value, but it also gives you hidden uh, issues or hidden leakages which are there in the organization. The third and the most important point is how you build visibility in your organization. Because if it is a siloed organization, there are many things happening in different pockets which you will not know. There are many things which will be happening, but your team is not able to uh, overcome those challenges. There are challenges. So what we typically help is 
how a control tower kind of a structure, a very structured uh, thought process, which not only provide one, uh, your transparency, second, it also provide intelligence, it also provide you support of doing those transactional tactical work on a very streamlined, efficient manner. So, in, to summarize, these are the three points which any organization, if they embark on, will be able to overcome this siloed procurement as a problem. Okay, I think Sachin uh, clearly explained what is silo. Uh, in my view, I will touch base upon an experience that we have actually gone through it and overcome this, okay? Particularly from an organization structure point of view. As he has already mentioned in the technology part, I will try to provide you an in, uh, insight on the organizational structure. Because the system can provide you the information required, but your structure is not supporting to that, then it would not have a meaningful outcome. So what we have done from an, uh, from an SLA organization perspective, our structure where procurement was earlier part of a function that is under finance, now move it towards supply chain, and now we have moved further down and become part of the business unit. Now, every business unit has a procurement partner. Okay. That means any decision that the business is taking, a procurement is involved in it, and he or she provides an insight and input towards the business by taking the right decision that has procurement insight. Okay. That's very important where we break the silo onto the entire organization, taking the right decision at the right time from the business point of view. Okay. So that's one of the things that we have changed the structure itself. Thank you so much, Anish. Vinish, my next question goes to you. How can digitization and unification of procurement processes elevate supply chain management and internal user experience? Sure. Thank you so much for the question, Tadishta. So um, I'll divide the question into two broad areas, which is digitization of procurement and unification in such a way that it is able to address the problems related to supply chain. Now here, if I have to talk about um, a recent study by McKenzie, uh, found out that out of the five broad areas of procurement, which we divide between upstream and downstream, uh, most of the organizations only have about 43% of digitization, which exists as of today. Now, what constitutes the upstream and downstream? Broad areas like sourcing, supplier performance, and information management, and contracts management are the step one where procurement actually begins for any organization, you know, whether it is a manufacturing heavy one or even something as, as plain and simple as a professional services. So, so step one for digitization is making sure that, uh, you, you know, your procurement step one, which is sourcing as a supplier lifecycle performance, um, as well as your contracts management are unified in such a way that it is able to give you the end-to-end -end view of, you know, where the material is getting sourced from, what are the, you know, pricing trends, which your suppliers have, you know, how, how your supplier been performing in last few years. Now, the second part to it is, to, uh, as of today, if I have to look about digitization, the user experience plays a very, very important role. Now, I'm sure in the audience, we, none of us required any training to order from an Amazon or a Flipkart, right? So your systems have to be designed in such a way that it becomes very, very easy, not only for your procurement team, but also as an internal user to be able to consume that tool. Now, um, since I'm from SAP and I'm part of SAP Ariba, um, the, the, we generally use an artificial intelligence term um, within our language, which is called guided buying. As an internal user, it's very easy for me to go to a catalog, you know, click on a mobile phone or whatever accessory I want to order, and then make sure that, you know, uh, all the approvals are in place, and it becomes very easy for our procurement team with that intuitive kind of a tool that is available to us uh, 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 to make sure that the uh, supply chain is unified as far as um, this is concerned. Now, another uh, very important area, and I'm sure because in this audience we have a lot of folks who will be definitely a part of the assessment committee of whenever they are trying to choose a tool, is integration with your ERP. Now, uh, we do not want our ERP to be left out. Uh, we really want our ERP to be the single point of truth because that's where the exact backbone of your entire procurement and supply chain lies. So um, if, if, the, if the supply chain and your ERP, supply chain tool or your procurement tool is able to integrate with your ERP in a natural way, 
then the unification is going to result in an end-to-end -end transparency. And I do not need to lay emphasis on the kind of reporting it can generate for you and you know, the way you'll be able to see your historic prices, negotiated prices and everything in place. Now, out of the four um, broad areas, uh, last but not the least, which is something very important for all the procurement team here, is the downstream part, which I still haven't covered, and I'm just going to take two, three quick seconds to talk about it, which is your purchase order and invoice automation. Now, since the world, and, and we've seen in pandemic how important it has become and imperative to the world to, look, to make sure that you know, this, this down, downstream function of procurement is automated, uh, it's not only to make sure that your you know, procurement touch points are able to access the system and provide the real-time purchase order and invoice automation, but also to make sure that your organization is becoming paperless and sustainable. So uh, in order to look at a sustainable management system, digitization and unification in a combination is going to definitely elevate your supply chain. Thank you. Spend on the sector, spend on the cost, 
these are the means from nice uh, the such a way so that it should give uh, some input to the business and finance or procurement to have uh, new insights, new opportunities that are in the market. So these are the basics and again uh, the data should be uh, presented uh, to the technology so that uh, decision making uh, should be uh, easily done. So, what are your views on this? Uh, it's the same, it's a uh, digital technology, so we have to be using digital technology as much as possible. And uh, sanitary, sanitary is uh, existing that is really important. Uh, the action plans are to implement regularly, it's a continual improvement process. We can't ignore any uh, legacy things. So, how do we review the process? Definitely, we can achieve the desired the new industry. But it is very, uh, it's, I have experienced personally, and every movement, every quarterly, we are changing our uh, thought process to new things. And I have developed my team, any team accordingly. And even from doing the things, uh, even we have this a lot of manpower, like unskilled manpower. It's also very, very important actually. We pay good salary to the employees. And, uh, Get the good right person for the things. Otherwise, uh, you are hiring at one you have an important issue actually. But uh, things are much better. Thank you. Thank you, Sunish. So, Sunish, I'll ask you the next question. Uh, what are the initiatives we pursue for enhancing procurement excellence and leading more strategic value? Uh, whether it is uh, using tools such as we do, or working with uh, our partners like IBM, what are the initiatives we pursued? Uh, right, so what are the initiatives uh, that, that we pursued now and have been enhanced in terms of right? And uh, to generate more strategic value. At least from uh, the company which I work from, this is, I'll just give you some example of what we have done. Digital transformation, from our point of view, we always consider this as a journey. Okay? We don't try to implement everything at one go. Okay? One by one, step by step, okay, we start implementing. Okay? Now, in this particular journey, the first and foremost, what we wanted to do and what we actually uh, try to get it is chain management. Okay? Ensure that the right person who is actually doing it, he accepts the change, accepts the new thing, and then probability of success in this is much more. Okay? And the second biggest thing what we have done is simplifying our procurement process. And you all know procurement uh, is one of the areas where the process is so stringent, and they consider that everything, whatever they do, has one or the other thing that has a loophole. Now we wanted to ensure that build a trust in it and put a procurement process that is more simplified and that will really help in terms of automation and digitization to be moving on to a next level but slow and steady. Okay. That's the way the approach that we have taken. Thank you so much. Uh, Shantumar, I'll uh, point this question back to you once more. When we are talking about strategic uh, procurement, when we are talking about uh, uh, the image, whatever we are talking about, especially we need to be at the team. We need to ensure that the customer is at What the customer needs. So we are working for the customer. The customer demand is very, very innovative and very flexible. And then they can ask anything in time. That will be how we are going to adopt ourselves into that essentially. So how we are working, especially when we are working at a particular function, we normally uh, look at it, we integrate vendor portals. We measure vendor performance as well as their QC impact, quality cost, delivery, and as well as their RM inhibitor also. We monitor their RM inhibitor. So when we are monitoring the RM inhibitor, as well as they can see their wealth, their, their uh, uh, status of their product availability in our warehouse, they can be able to see if it is color coded, black, red, green, yellow, white. If it is black, the stock out, and if it is white, it is no other stock. Then they are able to create themselves purchase orders as well. After they get it, automatically they get the purchase order themselves, and they are delivering the material with invoice also automatically. 
objective of procurement is not only to fill the transactional or tactical activities or only to bring material at the right time, right place. Now it has become more strategic. When I say strategic, it is not only getting involved in the day-to-day -day activity and participating in different uh, strategic discussions, but getting involved from the day one of the product cycle. So how the decision making is happening from the planning to execution and also getting it close to the time your procurement or payment is done. So when you look at the overall value add, it is not only by buying, it also adding value to innovation, getting the right inputs during the product design or product value add. At the same time, at the value, at the uh, later, uh, later part of the chain, it can be through how you are collaborating with vendors to get that innovation in-house. Because it's not only that innovation comes in internally, you can also collaborate with your vendors how to build your innovation uh, system in, the, in place. So that way, procurement role is becoming more and more strategic, not only to bring material, but also how they can build innovation, sustainability, and efficiency in the organization. Yeah. So um, nowadays, as I mentioned earlier, that procurement has become very critical function. So there are few initiatives, I think, out of the box thinking of procurement has become a necessity of the time. Uh, if I talk about uh, in terms of uh, supply management or uh, uh, you know, cost management, so these are the key factors where uh, I think initiative has to be taken. Static thoughts has to be put in. Thank you. So I think uh, just to summarize uh, uh, why we have discussed on how to bring the procurement team on the forefront, uh, it's, it's imperative today to look at innovation, look at simplification of the processes and make sure that you're deploying the right solutions within your organizations to have that end-to-end -end visibility and real-time reporting and also make sure that your users have an interface to which they can get easily trained on. So some of these things are going to definitely lead to a better uh, you know, outcomes for your organizations and in terms of value organization which is you know, uh, uh, having site management or savings etc. in an organization, that's, that's a byproduct for sure. Hello. Along with the ERP systems, uh, initially we took uh, how the digital transformation happened in our organization. Uh, first, we uh, along with the ERP, then we started the sourcing model actually. And uh, we ran the sourcing model for uh, six months to one year. And after that, we earned good money in the auction. That money I showed to the management. They are happy. And after that, they won another two model approvals that have provided to another model. And like this, just uh, I am slowly adding my tools into my system, definitely in that way it helps a lot as a lead of the procurement. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to all of you. Thanks for the insights. And I hope uh, you know, if there are any questions, uh, we can always definitely reach out. Thank you. Great insight of the procurement. I need to understand, we are talking about in-house uh, procurement excellence. What about the supplier upgradation or integration with our system so that if you see if the inputs are not correct, you will not be able to get the right kind of excellence in the procurement function or maybe the uh, deliverables. I need to understand.
to spend more thoughts on the sourcing or upgrading of the partners. Yeah, I will answer this question. The, we normally call it called garbage in, garbage out. Okay. When, when garbage in, garbage out is nothing but when we are procuring garbage, then automatically we can also garbage. So definitely, we ensure we must ensure the vendor quality as well as vendor capacity and capability. To do that, we need to get understand that we first selection of suppliers. It's very important how we are going to select that supplier. Who are the customers we should understand and how is capability, even financial capability actually. If somebody is having financial capability, poor capability, he's not able to procure his RM also, then it will be a big problem. So selection of supplier and association of the supplier, he should understand if he is component, how he is component getting assembled in our product, how important is that? That also we have to understand. Then we are also doing like what I said earlier, vendor innovation movement. We are also discussing with the supplier, even for that, starting to any product development also, we are involved with them. So that they are getting involved from the beginning and they will understand what percentage of rejection they have to maintain and, and ensure that the final product and how it is going to perform in the field also. And additionally, how competitive is the cost? The how the he has in terms of R&D recruitment, in terms of association with us, all these things need to be understood and additionally we are we are sending fortnightly his report card. How his performance in terms of field, how his performance in terms of SUR, supply quality rating in terms of income utilization, as well as as well as online rejection. All these things are monitored and we are continuously interacting with them. Somebody is not performing. We normally call Wednesday morning meeting. Wherever he may be, he should be visiting us on 8 o'clock morning to the our office and presently. How, what was the failure, how we going to take a corrective preventive action as well. Uh, this, is, this is what we are doing. And who is doing better performance, we are actually green card. So two green, green card, it means he is a supplier, direct online. He will not be inspected and product will be directly to the line. And he will be getting better business and even we are presenting some awards and all these things. We are not all these things we are doing. Okay, the vendor strategy is not aligned with the organization strategy, somewhere we will not be able to get the Like in some of the organization, people are just setting the vendor in the post trading on strategy, quarter line, delivery, and the looking supplier. So that in strategic zone, where you see more alliance, more discussion, top management, and it will be more business based on the business requirement. Absolutely. We are involving from the development itself, we are taking it the, from the beginning to up to the even for the field.